I think you will find tonight a very interesting one. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians that no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation. And you read it and you wonder, what is he talking about? May I tell you, it is just like saying, there is no other foundation other than God and his Son. For Jesus is the Lord. And Christ is the Son of the Lord. As told us in Revelation, and the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. So Jesus Christ is simply the father-son relationship. So no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now he tells us, do you not realize that Jesus Christ is within you? Now in the scripture you will find a strange reversal of order. The normal order would be that birth precedes death. You were born and you're moving towards the inevitable, which is death. The Bible reverses that. And death precedes birth. So he tells us in his next letter to the Corinthians, we're always carrying with us the death of Jesus in our bodies. That the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. Oh wait, this thing has gone off, hasn't it? You can hear me? But that all, all of a sudden that resonance is gone. Oh well. If you can hear me, it's perfectly all right. I do not know how to do these things. This? I don't know. But I mean, the whole thing sounds dead to me right now. Suddenly it went off. However, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better now. Is it better now? Yes. If you don't mind, I'll take a look at you. No, it's perfectly all right, Ali. Perfectly all right. So let me go back and clarify that point. We're always carrying with us the death of Jesus in our bodies so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Now, we are told a story in Scripture unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. It must die in order to be made alive. Blake, in his wonderful poem of Jerusalem, said, unless I die, speaking now, and these are the words of the Lord speaking, Unless I die, thou canst not live. But if I die, I shall arise again, and thou with me. So God dies. He is within us, and we are carrying his death within our body. And he remains in the grave until he awakes within us. And when he awakes within us, we awake as the Lord. So the foundation stone is Jesus Christ, and you cannot add any other foundation stone. There is no other foundation stone. Jesus being the Lord, and Christ being his son. His son is David, and Jesus is your own wonderful I amness. When you say, I am, that's the Lord Jesus. 
And Christ is his son who bears witness to the father. The father died, but the son also died. And then he sends his son into the world. You are acting in the world as John, as Jan, as Bill, as Philip, as anything. You do not know that that is the Son in action. In the end, the Son will return a victor to his Father. For whom he has undergone the entire adventure. And when he stands before you, the severed head of the enemy of Israel is placed before his father. That was the father's command to the son. And David returns with the severed head of the giant. And here the father looks at it and knows that David has fulfilled his will. So we are told, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. And Jesse means Jehovah exists. Jehovah means the self-existent, the eternal. The eternal is I am. That is the son of I am, and he stands before you, and here is this enormous head, severed from the body, that David brings and presents to his father. And that father knows his son has fulfilled his will. And that together is Jesus Christ. That relationship is in every child born of woman. And until it's completely fulfilled, the journey isn't over. It's something that is completely imposed upon man. And when the individual fulfills the conditions imposed upon him, that individual is, in biblical terms, called righteous. And righteous is the crown. And Paul said, henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. For he said prior to this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. So, O righteous Father, let them at last know that all is true that I have told them. That you did send me. That they may know that you sent me. And that the name that I gave for you is not mere poetry, but fact. And I gave you the name. His name is Father. It is Father, but you do not know you are the Father, not until the Son reveals you. And when you look at the Son and know he is your Son, then you will know you are the Father. And that Son is David. And Jesus is the Father. He who sees me has seen the Father. How then can you ask me, to show you the Father. I and the Father are one. But now, in the office of the saint, I seem to be inferior to myself, the sender. So I will say, I and my Father are one. But my Father is greater than I. Because in the office of the saint, I am the Son. Yet I am both the saint and the sender. I am returning to myself, the sender. And so I leave the world and go back to my father. But I and my father are one. 
having completed the work that my father gave me to do. Now I return as the father. This is a mystery. But a mystery is not a matter to be kept secret. It is a truth that is mysterious in character. Here let me share with you an experience of a friend of mine who was here tonight. And the one of whom she speaks is here tonight. I will take the one of whom she speaks next Monday. That is her story. But the one who actually had this experience said when I gave this huge party and this lady was the honored guest. As I went up to her, she was dressed in this lovely gown in sort of a purple robe, but they're all in folds. And she wore on her head a golden crown. And I said to her, why, that is exactly like mine. And she took off her crown and gave it to me. I said, come and see. And I took her into a dressing room. And there on the dressing table was the little figurine, not more than four or six inches tall, with the same folds in that carved onyx. It was a white onyx. But the little crown that she took off her head, that is the big crown, suddenly turned into something not bigger than a ring. And on the head of this little figurine was that identical golden crown and it was my figurine and it was my crown I took off my crown and placed hers on it and, you, and I said to her you see it's exactly the same crown now she said I cannot tell whether I replaced her crown or my crown on it I only know it was the identical crown so Paul in making the statement he is, does not say a crown he used, uses the definite article. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. There is only one crown. And all will wear it. When the son returns from that condition imposed upon him to destroy all gods other than the God. So any belief in a God outside of your own wonderful human imagination, your own wonderful I amness, that's a false God. So David brings down all false gods. So when he goes to face the great Goliath, and Saul will put upon him all the armaments of man. He said, I cannot wear these. I'm not accustomed to these. And he goes clothed only with the Spirit of the Lord. He said, I come in the name of the God of Israel. No other garment would he wear. And then he brings down the giant and takes the giant's sword and severs his head and brings the head back. Then he stands before Saul. And here is this enormous head. And may I tell you that is literally true in spirit. For when I saw him, and he stood before me, here before me, was this enormous head of the giant, completely severed from its body. And here is my son David, leaning against the door, but an open door, that led out into the most beautiful pastoral scene. And here was David, leaning against it, and the head before me. And I am looking at my son, just drinking in his beauty, and looking at the accomplished fact that my son had completed the command to do my will. And my will was to destroy all the enemies of Israel. And he brought back the head which symbolized all the false gods of the world. 